In the previous lesson, you learned that density is a physical property of matter. To observe the density, you have to observe the mass and the volume of a substance. And you learned that when you observe the mass, you don't have to change the way the atoms are bonded and make a new substance. When you observe the volume, you don't have to change the way the atoms are bonded to each other to make a new substance. You may rearrange them by pouring your substance into a graduated cylinder, which rearranges where the molecules are, but it doesn't actually change them to different molecules. And because Observing the mass doesn't change the substance, and observing the volume doesn't change the substance. Observing the density doesn't change the substance. Density is a physical property, obviously. In this lesson, we're going to learn about a physical property that is still pretty obvious, but isn't quite as obviously a physical property of matter. And that is the conductivity of a substance. What in the world is conductivity? Well, conductivity, scientifically defined, is how well a substance can carry an electric current or how well a substance can transmit heat. In fact, we're talking here about two different kinds of conductivity that are oftentimes related to each other, but not always. There are some substances that will conduct heat very well, but not really conduct electricity very well. Let's take a look at each of these two types of conductivity separately from each other. Let's start with electrical conductivity. And electrical conductivity is based on the freedom of electrons to move through a substance. Here I have that copper wire that we were looking at before, and you can see the way that the copper atoms are arranged. This is an element made up of just one type of atom. These are all copper atoms, and they're bonded in a very regular pattern. Now what would happen if I were to take electricity and run it through these copper atoms? Well, those electrons that make up the electricity would flow quite easily through the copper. And the reason that that is, is because copper is a great conductor. It gives its electrons a lot of freedom to move around. We would say that copper has great conductivity. But now here's what you need to know. Did we change the substance, copper, from what it was before to an entirely new substance? Did we change the way the atoms were bonded together simply by running electricity through copper? And the answer is no. It was bonded the same way before we ran the electricity through it compared to after we ran the electricity through it. Observing conductivity doesn't change the substance to a new substance, and therefore conductivity is a physical property of matter. Now does that apply to thermal conductivity as well? The ability of a substance to transmit heat from one area to another? Now here's the thing. Thermal conductivity primarily relies on the same thing as electrical conductivity to operate. The more free the electrons are to move around, the more likely something is to conduct heat and electricity. There's also another major factor at play with thermal conductivity, and that's how the crystal structure of atoms is arranged. The more simple the crystal structure is, and this copper crystal structure is one of the most simple crystal structures possible. Notice that all of the atoms are lined up in a straight line. The more simple the crystal structure is, the more likely the substance is to transmit heat well. Now, what does thermal conductivity look like? Let's add heat to one side of this copper and see what happens as that heat is applied to the copper. Notice that the atoms of copper are vibrating and they bump into each other and transmit that vibration through the entire substance. And they do that very quickly and very effectively, making copper a great conductor of heat. Now what do I mean by the simplicity of the crystal structure? Well, here's another substance that has a pretty simple crystal structure, but not quite as simple as copper. This substance is tungsten, which is not nearly as good a conductor of heat as copper is. What happens when we apply heat to one side of a crystal structure that's not as simple as copper? Notice that these 
atoms are not lined up perfectly in rows, but they're sort of staggered. Look what happens when heat tries to conduct through this substance. It has to move like different directions and it gets scattered around and it just doesn't move as effectively through the substance as it did with copper, which had a simpler structure. Now here's the question. Did adding heat to copper to transmit the heat through the substance change the copper from copper to a different substance? Absolutely not. The atoms were arranged the same way before and after we added heat. Tungsten is the exact same. As we look at what happens to tungsten, it doesn't actually change the arrangement of atoms from one arrangement to another. This tungsten crystal is still bonded together the exact same way as it was before we added heat. So, conductivity is a physical property of matter because running electricity through matter or transmitting heat through matter doesn't change the substance from one substance to another. It doesn't change the way the atoms are bonded together to make an entirely new substance. It is a physical property.